views, opinions, and representations expressed on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network and its website are those of the hosts, guests, and participants, and are not necessarily those of or endorsed by the network, its affiliated stations and broadcasts, the management, other hosts, or advertisers of the network. The shows found on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network can, but do not necessarily, promote any particular lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practice. These shows are for entertainment purposes only, and are not intended to treat, diagnose, and or claim any cure of disease or condition, or give any medical or legal advice. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network, from our compound to you worldwide, with your host, Gary Anderson. And that is me most of the time. Boy, I got most of my voice back, but still not its normal self. Well, that could be good. It could be bad. I don't know. Well, anyway, you're listening to me from the compound down at the harbor from coast to coast and to worldwide. And tonight we have uh, Neil uh, <laughs> Rosen back in. And we have a great guest tonight. It all started back on April. 24th, 1957, when he was born. And at eight years old, while being in his bunk bed, he saw some bright lights. Now, was that possible aliens? Well, we'll find out right after this. You can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio, and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. Well, hi, Niels. How are you doing tonight, my friend? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. And I'm glad you're getting a little better yourself. Yeah, well, when I clicked that mic button on, I lost my voice for a second, That which was, hey, I wasn't prepared for that. Anyway, <laughs> why don't you tell a little bit to the listeners who you are yeah. and a little bit about you? Okay. Um, well, the, the experience or... Or more, more about me as a well, well, a little bit about you, and then we're going to go into what happened when you were eight okay. years old on that bunk bed. Okay, I'm semi-retired. Um, I worked in the medical field. I worked in a laboratory for 15 years. I did patient care for two years, and then I worked in various other jobs before that. And um, I live out in the country. It's it's quiet out here. It's it's like living in Mayberry. It's very, very set back. There's very little crime. Um, you do see lights in the sky here, and things do happen around here. Um, uh, that thing started with me when I was, like, as you said, I was eight years old, and uh, I was sound asleep. And all of a sudden, I woke to a bright light in my face, <clears throat> and the only thing I could put akin to it was as if somebody had put a flashlight right up to my eyes, and. And for whatever reason, I, I thought somebody had broken into my, our house. I was on a top bed, <clears throat> bunk, and my brother was in the lower. And I was, um, I'm not sure why, but it just felt a fear for my life. I don't know why, but it just did. And I, I don't know, I'm thinking they're burglars, that they're going to harm me, whatever. So I kind of continued to roll over to kind of feign that I was still asleep and that I didn't see anything. So I was trying to listen to hear any sense, uh, any sound, any kind of movement, but I, I did sense there were more than one, that, that there were three. Can I, I ask I, you a I question? Did, did, yeah, you, yeah. did you do what I would normally have done? I would have put that blanket over me and, 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 and for protection? I did. I pulled it over my head. Okay. I did exactly that, and I broke out into a sweat almost instantly. And... Um, I rolled over, and like I said, I was trying to hear, and I couldn't hear any movement, but I could sense that they were moving around the room. And it was kind of a weird thing. I mean, you can't see anything. And then, you know, I was just super intense, you know, wide awake. But then I, it's like somebody flipped a switch. I just went to black. I, I, next thing I know, it's the next morning, and I, I jump out of the bed, and I, I investigate the room. I expected to find broken glass because I really, there was something in my room. This was not a reflection. This was in the room. And there wasn't anything. And now, you know, and I'm trying to explain away what this could be. And then I thought, oh, my parents must have come in, and maybe they shined a light in my face. I didn't really give it much thought, so I ran into my parents' room, and I, I said, okay, who was the wise guy who, who shined the light in my face? And my mother said, you know, we don't have a flashlight that works. 
So then I kind of like, well, kind of put that away. I wasn't sure what happened. But then things, you know, continued. And then to to this day that were hard to explain. And, I, and eventually I, I did understand what was going on. It, but it took a while. It, when you're a little kid, it's just, it's a lot to process. Were you very scared when, you know, when this happened, when those lights and all that stuff? And, and then you, if I remember right, when we were talking, you know, before the show, you went up to yep. your mom and your mom said, hey, we don't even have a flashlight in the, the house that works. Yeah, no, I, I was. I mean, I, well, first off, for being a little kid and being kind of, you know, everything is bigger when you're little and to have that kind of fear. And I, I, I still don't know why in my mind I, I was afraid for my life. I really felt like there was going to be harm. There's a sense, just like sensing that there was, how would I know how many people in the room? I saw one flashlight. Logically, you'd think there'd be one person, right? But I knew there was three. Now, I don't know if I'm recalling that from after the fact, because that, that was my first that I remember the, that happening. Maybe something happened earlier in my life, and I don't remember at all, because they, they can erase what's, what's there. But... I knew there were three, so I don't know if I'm recalling what happened to me. Like, part of my mind still knows what goes on, but it, it happened in that present time. So, no, somehow I knew there were three beings in that room, and they were moving around. And, yeah, I was, I was definitely very afraid. Now, did you sense any smells or anything when they were in the room? Uh, any weird sounds, uh, like they were trying to communicate with each other or anything like that? Were they, were they going through your personal items or, you know, in your bedroom or any of that stuff? Um, there was no absolute, that was, the, <laughs> that was the strangest thing. And it was absolutely devoid of sound. And that kind of bothered me the most because I couldn't hear anything. Because I, I kind of wanted to know where they were. Were they going to walk out of the room? What were they doing? You know, trying to gain my bearing, so to speak. There was absolutely no smells or anything like that. I just knew I was really, really scared. Uh, like I said, I was scared for my life. Well, and I, I remember breaking into a sweat. And I was just, again, my, my hearing was probably up to the nth degree to hear something. And I couldn't hear anything. And then, like I said, just like, just like a, a switch went off, I, I went to black. I just literally passed right out. So, and then the next morning, oh, that, that's what happened. And then, of course, I got that result that there is not a flashlight in the house that works. So well, that I, I, I wonder if they abducted you that night and, and took you on board some type of craft. You know, oh, I have no doubt. Yeah, because a, a lot of the reports I have, too, like when these uh, beings come in to abduct somebody, they don't go walking through your front door. They somehow manage to walk through the windows or through the walls. It, it's it's really eerie. I'm, I'm thinking that they went right through the wall because I, I know they know how to do vibrational things. They can separate things, and they, they have the ability to go through what we consider solid matter, which is absolutely not true because there's space between molecules. But yeah, they they abducted me. I think that I don't recall that because they wiped the mind pretty good as as I went through time. Because uh, as I said to you, I'm I'm going to be 62. I remember quite a bit of this stuff. I want to hear other people's things. They don't seem to. I'm kind of surprised at the recall that I do have. Um, so I, I just I put it down to I was a newbie, and the wipe took to me. And, and and then again, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm supposed to remember some things. It's it's a it's a very fuzzy world. You don't know what's what's really going on. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of the abductees I, I've talked to on the show they they remember little bits and pieces. Like Calvin Parker remembered that you know sitting you know on the dock, and all of a sudden they they saw these blue lights you know, behind them, and they thought they were going to be busted because they were on private property, you know, on the dock on the river uh, across from the uh, shipyard, uh, Navy shipyard. And, right. uh, you know, the next thing they he knew that, like, two alien, like, robotic uh, creatures, you know, grabbed him by his arm, but not hurting him, and he no. just levitated off the ground and no. just floated to the craft. Oh, yeah. It definitely can float you out. So you were eight years old when this happened. Now, how did it affect you uh, after that? Well, like I said, I can't. 
Uh, let's see. Um, that's a big question. I mean, it, it affected me a lot in ways that I didn't understand. I became, not that I probably wasn't before, but at that age I didn't, I chose to be a loner. Um, I didn't really associate, I didn't have any feel or want to be a very social person, and not because I was afraid. It's just that I, I kind of feel, and I still feel that way, I'm, I feel separate from the population. And it's hard to explain. I just do. And I, if I'm close to somebody, I can kind of sense what they're feeling. And in, in, in healthcare, being empathetic helps because you know what your patient's going through. You can kind of go back and forth with them. But so if I'm around people that are really negative or angry, I can't be with them for very long because it actually makes me feel sick. So a lot of things happen to me. Um, my ability to see things happen before they happen, um, however you want to call it. I mean, I, I think there's a science to it. I think I kind of understand it now. But that happened, and as a little child, that scared the crap out of me. I was um, maybe fourth or fifth grade, and in those days, talking early 60s, um, they still could hit you in school. <laughs> oh, tell me about that. I was up in the principal's office quite often with that, that uh, you know, that rubber boot sole uh, going <laughs> on my fanny. I, I guarantee you, I, I know how they used to hit. Yeah, well, so I was waiting in the lunch line, which is <laughs> kind of extensive. It goes down the hallway, and you file in, and you have like a little lunch ticket, and um they had this janitor there. His name was Mr. Marciano, and they called him Mushy. I'm God rest his soul by now. He used to walk around with a stick, and he didn't really hit you hard. You know, he just tap your leg if you got out of line, whatever. We kind of laughed. You know, he, nice. he kind of reminded me of Jackie Gleason. That's how he looked like. <laughs> and um, I'm standing there, and then all of a sudden, in my mind's eye, it's hard to explain. It's like a, a movie happened in front of me. This teacher, his name was. Oh, Mr. Marcus, really tall drink of water, very British looking. And, and what I saw was that he walked up to this student, picked him up by his neck, and slapped him across the face. I mean, the kid was, I mean, this guy is tall. And so, you know, we're kind of short at that, at that age. And this kid was off the ground by four feet. The bottom, I'm talking about the bottom of his feet. And 